Hey, I'm Andrew Connell. This video is an overview of one of the chapters in my course, Mastering the SharePoint Framework, that's available for uh, purchase on my site, Voitanos.io. This overview video is going to give you an idea of everything that the chapter uh, covers. You can learn more by checking out the description uh, in the notes below the video. Um, if you got any questions about this chapter or about the course in general, just make sure you drop a comment uh, below in, in the uh, below the video and I'll be sure to get back to you. So with that, let me get out of the way. Enjoy the overview to this chapter. Hello and welcome back to my course on Mastering the SharePoint Framework. In this lesson, I want to dig into the structure of a SharePoint Framework solution, as well as some of the common characteristics that all SPFX solutions have. Now, often when creating new solutions, regardless of the language, you're left with a bunch of files and folders that no one ever explains. Not in this course. This chapter is going to tell you exactly what files you can safely ignore, those you should pay attention to, and which ones need to belong within source control, as well as those that should be excluded. This chapter will also touch on the page context, how to detect different environment types, and how to add multiple components to a single SPFX solution. But before we look at the project, let's talk about the different SharePoint environments and how they impact your SPFX solutions. First and foremost, everything as in 100% of the things that I cover in this course apply to the SharePoint framework version that's deployed to SharePoint Online. SharePoint Online always has support for the latest and greatest capabilities in the latest version of SPFX, but that's not the case with the on-premises deployments of SharePoint Server. Now let's talk about on-premises SharePoint Server deployments and how they deal with the SharePoint framework. Unfortunately, installable software has to go through a long development validation, packaging, and testing process. And this means that what goes in the installable package is usually much older than what you would hope for. This is true when it comes to SharePoint Server on-premises deployments and the SharePoint framework. In other words, the version of the SharePoint framework that you get in an on-premises deployment is from many months prior to the release of the SharePoint Server. Another unfortunate truth that we have to come to terms with is the fact that Microsoft has no plans to upgrade the versions of the SharePoint framework that are included in the on-premises deployments of SharePoint Server. Microsoft has made the SharePoint framework available in SharePoint Server 2019 and SharePoint Server Subscription Edition, also known as SharePoint Server SE. And while SharePoint Server SE shipped years after SharePoint Server 2019, they have identical support for the SharePoint framework, including all limitations and capabilities of what's supported. SharePoint Server 2019 and SE both include version 1.4.1 of the SharePoint framework, and this provides support for web parts, property panes, and the original three types of extensions that we got. If you're going to be targeting SharePoint Server 2019 or SharePoint Server SE for your SPFX solutions, I suggest you review the two definitive guides that I've published on the Voitano site. I've also included in these posts how to set up your developer environment to target these different environments. After the initial release of the SharePoint framework in early 2017, Microsoft made the SharePoint framework available in SharePoint Server 2016 with the release of Feature Pack 2. Feature Pack 2 adds support for the SharePoint framework version 1.1 to SharePoint Server 2016, and this provides support for just web parts and property panes. If you're going to be targeting SharePoint Server 2016 with Feature Pack 2 for your SPFX solutions, I suggest that you review the definitive guide that I've published on the Voitano site, and I've also included in this post how to set up your developer environment to target that, uh, that deployment environment. Okay, so how do I plan to approach the challenge of one SPFX but different capabilities across different deployment options? The vast and overwhelming majority of the students in this course are using SharePoint Framework in SharePoint Online. So that's what I focus on primarily in this course. And when it makes sense throughout this course, I'll make a note of something that in SPFX is unique to a specific SharePoint deployment option that isn't covered by something above. But if you're an on-premises SharePoint deployment and unsure if something in SPFX is available for you or not, just drop a comment in the relevant lesson and I'll get you sorted. Okay, let's head to the next lesson and start with our tour of the SharePoint Framework project.